Let me ask you this question, brother. You are always in Africa. You got the African Day Parade. You don't see the Africans. You got the um, the festival that be going on in Brooklyn, the um, the BAM Festival, the African Festival. Where's the Africans at? When we doing our rallies and our marches, where's the Africans at on your side? Talk to us really about that, man. See, let me tell you something. We think slavery in America was something. Slavery in Africa is still in force. You talking about deaf, blind, and dumb? Don't confuse because somebody got on some printed cloth that's printed in Holland or India that you're looking at an African cultural expression. That's not an African cultural expression. That cloth was printed in a European country and then sold to Africans. And they've accepted that as their cloth. You understand what I'm saying? Just that piece. Now, they do speak the language, but they know less about their history than you and I do. So you've got a deaf, blind, dumb, backwards person speaking an African language, coming from the African country, don't, came here to be a parasite on their own people with no respect for themselves as human beings, and then, because they speak a language, try to make you play you off like they got something culturally that you don't have. The, the most culturally enforced African in the world is the African American. Most of the movements that have changed the world that allow all ethnic nations to profit has been our movement. And so we get peed on and played down because these people are so punked out and scared of the white man that they feel because they're scared of the white man, they got to be against us. Are you know? they our people, brother, or yeah, are we no, our own people no, now? No, we got to understand two things. We, we have a race and then we have an ethnic place. We ethnically, we African Americans. Just like a guy from Africa, he can say he's African, but there's no country called African. He's either Nigerian, Ghanaian, Malian, or some, that's his ethnic nation. Racially, we are together, but economically, we may well be enemies. And we have to be clear on that, that our, our economic enemy is just that. And if you deal with your economic enemy like it's your friend, you're going to be the loser at the end of the day. Now, we raise the question of Pan-Africanism in this hemisphere. You know, you had the brothers from Trinidad, and then you had W.B. Du Bois, and we created this phenomenon. But Africa has never created a Pan-African movement. You understand? Africa has never really supported a Pan-African movement. The, we had a couple of people in Kruma and Julius Nyeri and Mugabe, but most of Africa never gave a damn about a Pan-Africanism because they're still bogged down in the colonial slavery of European Judeo-Christian indoctrination, which is worse than anything that we've suffered. Worse than anything that we've suffered. The illusion of the clothes and the language make us think we're dealing with somebody that, that has some African purity culturally and spiritually. You're dealing with a confused, backwards Christian that love Europe more than they love their own ancestors. They, do, they would not even use an African word for God. You know, in Ghana, if you talk about being a traditional African, you might get beat down in the street. You understand? You're ostracized on the radio. Movies are made to show African culture as being the devil, while Christian culture is coming in as the savior. This is TV shows and on TV in Nigeria and Ghana every day.